Hi everybody, this is the second video in this brief series on mood disorders. And um, what you're seeing here is a picture of the diagnostic criteria for major depressive disorder from the DSM-5. What you can't see here is what comes before because it, the, the, it would be too small to see. So what comes before this is it says present for, the, uh, for, for at least two weeks and that either one or two, the, the, um, the criterion one or criterion two have to be part of the disorder. And that out of the nine signs and symptoms that you see here, five must be present. So five must be present for at least two weeks and either one or two are part of that five. So let's, let's go over this. The first one is depressed mood. People typically report that, um, they will come in and say that they feel depressed or sad. Sometimes they don't, and you can see it. Um, but often people will report it or report something like that. If they feel sad, they feel empty, hopeless, suicidal, um, uh, tearful. Uh, you'll see a lot in the DSM that it says that in children and adolescents, it can look different. Uh, we need to be a little bit careful with that, and we'll talk about that in the next uh, maybe two, two videos from this. So, Number two is markedly diminished interest or pleasure in all or almost all activities, most of the day, nearly every day. Now, this is something called anhedonia. Anhedonia is, is this, it's the inability to experience pleasure. And of course, it's in things that the person once found pleasurable. Uh, so, you know, they used to like doing something, you know, whether it's uh, doing art or dancing or going on hikes or being with friends, and now they don't. They just take no pleasure in anything. Number three is changes in weight. So we see loss, weight loss or weight gain of at least 5% of body weight when the person is not trying to lose or gain weight. Insomnia or hypersomnia, so that's sleeping too little or sleeping too much nearly every day. Psychomotor agitation or retardation nearly every day. So, um, Psychomotor agitation, remember, this is, this is the physical expression of the psychological experience. So psychomotor agitation doesn't mean that the person is hyperactive. What it means is that typically what you're going to see is things like hand wringing, maybe pacing, maybe, um, you know, gestures like, like movement, but movement of agitation. Um, it's not running around and, and uh, being distractible. It's not energetic necessarily. It's agitated. Psychomotor retardation is from the word to retard is to slow. So uh, that's when you see sometimes somebody who's very depressed, um, they move slowly. Their body seems like it's almost hanging. Um, if you ask them their name or like if, if I'm going out to do a, a crisis assessment, I can ask a person their name and it could take them a while to respond. When they respond, they do so slowly. They think a lot between responses. Their body moves slowly. So yeah, it's a significant slowing. So either agitation or retardation. And this is something that's observable. It's not just that the person reports that they feel slow. You can actually see it. Number six is fatigue or loss of energy. Seven, feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt. So, um, poor self-esteem, feelings of worthlessness, um, inappropriate guilt. What that looks like is typically what it looks like is taking on responsibility for things that the person really isn't responsible for. So, you know, there's normal levels of inappropriate guilt. Sometimes I feel bad for, uh, let's say, my partner's mood because 
I don't know. I haven't, you know, let's say I haven't been very cheerful lately and they're kind of down and I think, oh, it's my fault that they're down because I haven't been, oh, I take responsibility for it. It's really not my responsibility. Their mood is their mood, right? Um, but when guilt is inappropriate, it's when we're starting to feel guilty or really bad for things that are not, are not our fault. Now, you see here it says, which may be delusional. Delusional guilt would be if I took responsibility for, say, the, the fires in California. Um, and I said that it was because I uh, angered the universe by being a selfish person and uh, doing something. I can't think of something right now. And so that's why there are fires in California. That would be delusional. That is not realistic. Diminished ability to think or concentrate and indecisiveness. Indecisiveness can be a real um, significant feature of depression where people just have a really hard time making up their mind about something. It can be from getting dressed, what am I gonna wear, to, uh, how am I going to get to work, to making bigger decisions in their life? Do I stay in this relationship? Do I leave? And what you might notice is that it drives people crazy around them, wanting them to be more decisive, and they're not. Difficulty in concentrating. I actually hear this a lot from students. So students experience difficulties in concentrating for a variety of reasons, many, many reasons. One of them can be depression. When we're depressed, Typically, like, like I said, we could be slowed, uh, you know, just the thinking is, is slower, but we're also preoccupied with um, feeling bad, feeling miserable, bad thoughts, bad feelings, and those take the place of other things that we're trying to focus on. It's very hard to focus when your mood is taking over. And recurrent thoughts of death. Now, this is not just fear of dying, it's uh, suicidal ideation. Now the person can have a specific plan which is dangerous. Uh, suicide attempt. Um, so this is, this is of course a very serious, serious symptom. And people with depression do sometimes commit suicide. So we have to really take that into account. Now remember, for a diagnosis of major depressive disorder, the person needs to manifest five out of these nine, not all of them, with at least either one or two, depressed mood or diminished interest has to be one of those symptoms. And this has to be present for at least two weeks. This, uh, these diagnostic criteria, this list, doesn't really talk about severity. It just talks about the what what is going on, not how bad it is. It does tell you how long it needs to be at least two weeks. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up this video here. This will be our second video in this series on mood disorders.